I want to thank you all again for joining us online today. Um, thank you, Russ, for um, inviting me to do this presentation. I have to say, in all honesty, that I decided on uh, a topic, and then the NGO from Netherlands, Terrorist Homes, came with um, a new, well, a tool they developed to show how many pedophiles are online during the uh, well, illegal use of internet. So I changed my uh, presentation a bit. I hope you don't mind. And just bear with me. Um, next slide, please. Thank you. Um, the World Wide Web, well, as we all know, um, it offers endless, endless possibilities. Um, I even found out that you can order a slot online for just $27 plus shipping costs. Um, Facebook, Twitter, ultimate bullying tools, um, and then also now the new debate if access to internet should be a constitutional right. So these are just the negative sides, well, a few negative sides of the internet, but of course there's also the positive, the easy access to information, and easy access to gain more knowledge about anything you would like to know. Uh, knowing what's going on on the other side of the world but unfortunately there's just as much bad as there is good on the internet next slide please um we all know our research has shown that the distance uh, which using internet creates between people uh, sometimes can be a good thing but on the other end it makes people feel really safe and uh, they behave differently than they would do in normal life. Um, just recently, this week, the Dutch police announced that they, well, of course, they have a 24 hour watch on uh, Twitter, and that as of the 5 million tweets sent every day in the Netherlands, more than 30,000 obtain online threats to, well, uh, school teachers, uh, the police. Uh, anyone and out of that 30,000 they have to investigate 200 each day just to make sure that they aren't for real um, and I think I put it in quote here because I think one of the police officers uh, got the gist of it when she said a tweet is so much easier to send than to write a letter and go out to the post office to get the stamps next slide please thank you um, the Sweetie Project, I started to mention it already, it's um, by Terra des Homes, a Dutch NGO who mainly uh, works to, well, reduce child abuse uh, all over the world. Um, and I just want to show you their um, Sweetie Project, what they made, uh, because again, what I said, I think it gets the gist of what we're trying to do. Um, could you please click on the, on the link? Please bear with me to see if there's anything I can do to make this work. Hey, and hey, to the audience, to the audience. Uh, we're going to shift the, the video quality so that we can show the YouTube. That we can use the show the YouTube, but we may not have audio. We're not sure. We'll try. Well, above that. <laughs> wow, it's a nice commercial for organ donors. A, if what we're seeing on our screen is asking you to prompt to hit play for the video. We've seen the advert. Can you press play? See what happens. Because if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Well.
Okay, I, I, think I think there's a technical there's problem, a technical with, that, problem so with that, so just talk to just it. Talk we to won't it. show the video. Uh, it's unfortunate that we don't have to, doesn't make a, won't, well, aren't able to work the video because um, I'll try and um, to grasp in a nutshell what the Sweetie Project is. They made an um, animation of a child, a 10-year-old uh, Philippine girl, and uh, just monitored how many men uh, from around the world uh, tried to chat up with her and the horrible things they say. Um, in the end, it shows that she gets more than a hundred thousand viewers, and uh, just by using their normal sense, they were able to track uh, over two thousand, two thousand men all over the world by finding out their credit card information and uh, even their addresses. But the big problem, of course, is that it's still not. Uh, we haven't agreed on how. Uh, we should deal with these type of children abuse. We all agree that um, we should do something to prosecute, but how it does it work with the digital evidence? Uh, can we trust it? Um, et cetera, et cetera. Could you please click on the next slide? You just have to trust me in my opinion. It really crap captures it all. But while well, it does show whom we're working for, for all the girls and boys um, throughout the world who are being illegally abused. Um, by the use of internet and also what the challenges are. But if you click ahead, it's easier for me to keep you informed what I'm talking about without seeing the video. Okay, so today um, I tried to capture, well, where we are today with the project. What are we doing? Well, we have all the information we, we need to proceed. We know how many, well, not how many, but there are many children for being abused. Uh, we know that we need better investigation tools and methods because of, of course, the criminals and the offenders online, uh, they keep developing themselves and their methods and tools. And we also need worldwide collaboration because what if an offender is sitting at his home in the UK and watching child abuse online, uh, which is being performed in the Philippines. Um, and also, and this to me as a work group leader from the law bit, is the, the main part. We have to make sure that digital forensic evidence is as generally accepted and trustworthy as we now know DNA evidence is. So for tomorrow, this is, I think, uh, it captures the, the goal of the project uh, completely and, um, well, challenging the problems and uh, seeing for a fit uh, chain of custody by making sure that everybody is ISO accredited uh, based on the 17025 rule, um, and also to inform uh, prosecutors, uh, defense lawyers also, because you have to know as well, uh, and judges on how it works and that you can believe digital forensic evidence that we can pinpoint that you did at some, at some point something wrong by being online, um, and then how we should uh, presented uh, present in uh, the course of law. Next slide, please. Um, future, well, I don't think we can solve, um, well, save the entire world by um, making sure that we have full investigative tools uh, with great accreditation, uh, experts working on it, uh, prosecution, uh, and judges in line to see that the evidence is trustworthy. But what we can uh, achieve is that those people who feel safe uh, using the internet, being in the other part of the world, committing their crime, that we can find them and help them, uh, help hold them accountable for their actions. Um, next slide, please. So who am I? Because that's also a question. I'm just a lecturer in law and forensics um, who sees the possibilities of this project and who's very keen on uh, trying to make this world a safer place for all of us and hopefully do that with all you, the help of all you guys. Next slide, please. Um, where am I from? Could be relevant as well. Uh, Advanced University of Applied Sciences in the Netherlands. We have a major in forensic laboratory science. I'm not going to um, keep you occupied with what we do. Um,
just to let you know that we do have a major in forensic science main laboratory but we also trying to specialize even more in uh, digital forensics next slide please um, also we're working on an international forensic major minor um, which will mainly focus on international projects. So for me, this project is uh, not only a way to um, help and uh, bring digital forensics and all its benefits uh, under the intention of prosecutors and judges and uh, even police forces in the Netherlands, but also a way to um, gain information for our students, how they should work on international projects and do their international collaborations. Next slide, please. The students, please don't start reading this all because it's not important. Um, what I meant to do is I asked eight of our graduated students to um, join this project and ask them to write down what you think uh, that you can achieve within this project or what you think the goals of the project are and how you think uh, we should see this. And while uh, Sabine here says that she calls it a great challenge to get involved uh, in cybercrime problems and uh, that it's very important to investigate the privacy laws within these countries to see how we can come up with an agreement of coherent law to prevent cybercrime. Um, I think she, she gets the gist of it when she says that and well with students like that it's even more fascinating and more interesting to join this project. Next slide please. Um, also Lonica, uh, I'm just going to take you through it really fast because uh, again, what I said, it's, it's mainly to show you uh, how inspired they are to join um, such a beautiful project and how that inspires me to make more, uh, to, well, to do more and uh, to give my, my all for this project. Next slide, please. Also, Quirina, again, uh, I think she captures it for me for the law a little bit by saying how investigating parties can handle the same guidelines. Um, so that's not also for the accreditation, but that's also for the law part. How can we achieve um, a worldwide uh, agreement on what should be um, seen as a criminal act on the internet and whatnot? That's, that's a big challenge, but I'm looking forward to it. Next slide, please. And then expectations. Well, um, again, it's needed to solve crimes. Well, that's basically how students look at it. And it's true. Um, but also, they say that, uh, well, um, they hope that they can do their share of making the world safer as well. And to me, that's that's a lot for students thinking like that, not just thinking about themselves, but also about how they can help make the world a better place. Um, in the end, um, I don't know if all of you see that it's, it's gone now. Doesn't no, no, you don't have to put that in. It's not necessary. Thank you. There was just background information about what the major forensic science at the France University is, but I don't need it. So could, I'm, I know. Sorry, guys. You could just go back to the formal presentation and just the last slide. Um, you can just leave this. I just want to say something to all of, to everybody attending. And um, as, a, as a group leader, uh, we will we'll be holding a similar conference, hopefully with a working video by then, uh, on the 27th of November, um, just for the law of it, to uh, really talk about what we want to do and how we should do it and where we're standing right now. So this one for me was just informative to how I see the project, but in order to get um, a great team of uh, everything, lawyers, uh, judges, prosecutors, uh, police, uh, men, uh, we will hold an extra, uh, an additional conference. Also, please, if anybody is interested in joining the work group on the law uh, task, just let me know. There's uh, The legal task is so broad, we have to investigate so many different aspects, not just the criminal law, but also the privacy law, how is that arranged? Um, just let me know. You can use the email address, which is um, hopefully visible for everybody at this point. Um,
and otherwise I will make sure that Ross can send out my email address somewhere online to contact me. Um, well, last but not least, uh, I would like to say that um, as a work group leader, I'm really looking forward to um, work with a great team, uh, combine our strengths um, to tackle this problem, which does need our international worldwide collaboration. Um, thank you so much for now. I'm, I'm a bit well, fast now because the video didn't work. First, do you need me to say anything else or can I just thank all of you for participating?